50 years ago, 100 ships carried fishermen away from Provincetown to bring back 50 million pounds of fish a year. Today, 30 ships yield the same catch. A few days ago, I was one of the fishermen who sailed, and now I've come back, back to Provincetown, back to the tranquil world of art and artists, back to my friends. It's not much of a town as towns go. It's only a pair of streets curving along the harbor, but it's changed since the days when it was strictly a sailor's town. Today, millions of tourists think of it as a colorful vacation spot. Somebody once estimated that a third of the nation's population lives within a day's drive of Provincetown. And there are times when it seems they're all trying to prove it at once. Luckily, this morning, most of the tourists are still at home, reading travel folders and dreaming and planning their trip here. Although a few have already gathered to watch the artists at work. And a town with this much color attracts a lot of artists and writers and poets. Here's one of my favorite places in Provincetown. It's called Poor Richard's Garden. And here my friend Ilona runs the Carolyn Galleries, together with another girl named Karen. Ilona has a distinctive style of her own. popular artist is my old friend Henshi, an artist who, like so many others, was influenced by a man named Hawthorne, one of the first painters to be drawn to Provincetown and the founder of the Cape Cod School of Art. Once a week, Henshi holds a demonstration for the tourists. I never get tired of watching. I always wanted to be a painter, but I've got fishermen's hands. Still, it's good to have the smell of oil paints in my nostrils again. Thank you. 
Not far from here, a young man settled in 1916 to write his first plays, which were later presented on the stage of a theater in New York named, fittingly enough, the Provincetown Playhouse. His name was Eugene O'Neill. Later, a famed Greenwich Village poet, Harry Kemp, came here and built a shack by the sea where he lived his last years and wrote his last poems. Whenever I come along this stark and peaceful beach, I think of the lines he wrote. The ocean shines like many disks of brass, or between white hollows it lapses great and green, where solitude sifts slowly in between the hills of sparkling waste and rise and fall, hills whose one music is the seabird's call. And here is all space that ever I can see, the ocean completing all immensity, and the sky mother of infinity. Yet greatness on smallness jostles till both are one, and a grain of sand stands doorkeeper to the sun. night means the flash of neon lights, the gay cafes, the sound of music. But for the fishermen, it signals the time to leave. But as we go, we know that soon we shall return. Soon we will come back to Provincetown. <laughs>